Forgive me if I repeat myself, Miss Brown, but it's good to see you back. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Pete, I just have to disagree with you. The Minnesota multiphaser clearly shows that Arnie Rothman basically has a stable personality. Liz, you see a bunch of numbers on paper, right? Well, I see a kid in class who never stops scratching. Now, Arnie is nervous, but the boy I tested is not emotionally disturbed. The boy in my class is. Well, the boy and me would like his breakfast, so if you two don't mind, I will now put in my two cents. That's why we're here. Now, I've gone over his records. I agree with you. We should schedule him with our visiting psychologist whenever that learned gentleman chooses to make himself available. I think we should keep a close eye on him, but I think we should give it a month before we schedule any special schooling. Now, does that make everybody happy, or you want to fight some more? Fight? Who's fighting? Good. I believe in less fighting and more reading. I'll be in the cafeteria. That's what I say. I'll be right here. Come in. Hello, Mr. Kaufman. Am I disturbing you? No, not a bit. But come in, Miss Brown. You look great. Thank you. You're just in time to meet your department head, Pete Dixon. Diana Brown? How hello. do you do? Hello, Is Mr. McIntyre, Diana Brown. Hi. Hi. How are you? Well, I just dropped by to say hello. Good. See you later. Welcome back. Welcome back, Thank Ms. You. Brown. You know something? That young woman was one of the most exciting teachers we ever had in this school. Why'd she leave? The usual. We get married, of course. Oh, then it's Mrs. Brown. Not exactly. She's going through a divorce right now. Oh. She's going to be taking over Mrs. Goodman's social science class while she's on maternity leave. Oh, that's the one. I don't know where I got the idea she was a lot older. <laughs> We see that organized labor faced stiff opposition in its early efforts to win reform. Now, let's list a few of the methods that management used to resist. Blacklist, yellow dog contracts, Foxy. Quiet, man, you interfere with my concentration. Lockout. Now, the gentleman that thinks I'm Foxy. <laughs> what is a yellow dog contract? She got you there, brother. <laughs> I didn't read that page last night. <laughs> Did anyone? Uh, Helen. A yellow dog contract was a written agreement that a worker had to sign when he went for a job, promising he wouldn't join a union. Very good. You see, those people must have really been in the bar. Yes? Suppose you were the sole support of a large family, and the only way that you could feed your kids was to sign a contract that would make you look like a fink to your friends. How would you feel? Uh, I don't know. Well, you do have feelings, don't you? Or is that optional equipment in your case? <laughs> hey, my man Bernie figures he's got two eyes, two ears. He's the head of the game. <laughs> okay, Big Daddy, stand up. Let's see how you stack up. <laughs> no, I mean it. Come on, stand up. We're going to have a little psychodrama. Larry, go to my desk. You too. The year is 1910. You are a foreman in a steel mill. You have strict orders to issue no union contracts. Jason, you're a European immigrant with six kids. <laughs> Don't tell my mama she ain't ready for that. <laughs> I'm grading on this little exercise, folks. Okay, Jason, you need a job? Go to it. Uh, what do you want me to do? You don't know? You lost the job. Sit down. Pam, would you like to try? Okay. Um... I understand you need some steel workers. Yeah? You got experience? Oh, yeah. I've, I've worked in the steel mills all over. Well, that's cool. You got the job. <laughs> okay, Larry, back to the bread lines for you. What's your name? Arnie Rothman. It's funny. 
According to my seating chart, you're Sylvia Bernstein. <laughs> Sylvia moved. Oh, excuse me, Sylvia moved. <laughs> Would you like to be foreman? Heather? Hmm. I see here that you're experienced. Did you ever belong to a union? Oh, no, no, sir. Oh, good. Then if you want to work here, you have to sign this paper. Oh, okay. All right. Well, what do you think of that, workers? It's big. Don't sign it. What do you mean, don't sign? What are my kids supposed to eat? Pride? Okay, thank you very much, girls. Reach after 10 tonight. See you tomorrow. Oh, I appreciate your cooperation, girls. Thanks again. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi. Hi. Boy, are you really on a diet today? Would anyone care to discuss the weather? Not me. I want to talk about Miss Brown like everybody else. Boy, she sure is good looking. You know, if I were five years older, I'd really be jealous. Well, <coughs> better get my lunch. <laughs> Toodles. <coughs> Helen, near perfect as usual. Pam, I like the way you phrase things. Jason, buy a dictionary. <laughs> Bernie, you and Jason must have learned how to spell out of the same comic book. <laughs> Bernie, what can I say to you about this assignment? I mean, where do I begin? Spelling, punctuation, grammar are abominable. Research non-existent. Try it again, Arnie. I won't even grade you on that. I mean, I can't. The alphabet doesn't go that low. <laughs> okay, for the next four weeks, we're going to be discussing some contemporary American problems. Women. Okay. Starting tomorrow, we'll discuss women as a contemporary problem. Well, Mr. Dixon, I don't think that women are the problem. I think it's men understanding where we are instead of where they want us to be. Okay, Pam. Then you research the changing role of women. Anybody else? How about the effects of desegregation? Okay, that's good. That'll be your assignment tomorrow. Well, anybody else? Hmm. Seem to be having a ladies' day here today. Bernie, nothing from you? Arnie? Okay, see what you can come up with tomorrow. Jason, can I see you a minute? Yeah. What's going on? That new teacher, Miss Brown. What about her? She's one mean, hard-nosed lady. She's got it in for us, Mr. Dixon. Us? The fellas. And her class is a drag. I don't know how or why, but she's demoralizing the boys. Pete, that just doesn't sound like Diana. Are you sure it's her fault? I haven't seen it for myself. But she teaches the class before mine, and the boys are coming in like a bunch of whipped puppies. Look, Pete, you, you know, I suspect Diane has been through a pretty rough time. I understand that divorce of hers was pretty messy. Why don't we be a little patient with her? Give her time to make some adjustments. I'm sorry, but the classroom is not a place for a teacher to work out her personal problems. I agree. Well, let me tell you something. I have sat behind that desk and watched a lot of teachers come in and out of this place. Some are better than others, but you very rarely get a great one. Diana was a great teacher. I want to keep her here. What if she isn't a great teacher anymore? Pete, I'm asking for your cooperation. Let's give her a little time. Okay. What do you mean you forgot your hall pass? You never had one to begin with, Arnie. We both know it. You were trying to sneak out. I don't feel good. I want to go home. Oh, be my guest, Mama's boy. But first of all, you march yourself down to the attendance office and get an excuse slip like everyone else has to. Arnie? Did you think you were being a little rough on him? 
This isn't a nursery school, Mr. Dixon. And Arnie does graduate in a year. It's about time you shaped up. Okay. But all of our kids don't have the same levels of maturity, especially Arnie. So ease up, Miss Brown. And that goes for the rest of the boys you've been writing, too. <laughs> You're the head of the department, Mr. Dixon. But I didn't know that Whitman was giving out diplomas in spinelessness this year. I think we should have a talk about your attitude. And I think we should have a talk about yours, Mr. Dixon. I mean, it's really terrific the way you get down with your kids. The only trouble is, is when someone makes some real demands upon them, they don't know how to behave. You have to I mean, your self-indulgent little schoolboys get all shook up when a mean lady teacher tries to make them behave like men. And you know why? Because Mr. Dixon doesn't talk to them that way. Because Mr. Dixon is their chum. Are you finished? What's Christ popularity? Peter Dennis getting called. It's incredible. Pete, you should have told me you didn't like Italian food. Liz, do you realize what I'm stuck with? She decimates Arnie, she tears Jason down along with the rest of the boys, and I am supposed to help Mr. Kaufman keep her in school. Pete, it isn't every night that I make gnocchi alla Genovese. In fact, it isn't every night I can pronounce it. Now, will you please eat? Good? Mm. <laughs> Mr. Kaufman? Pete, I'm on to something. Yeah, me too. How much time do you plan on giving Miss Brown? Before what? Before you or I deal with her behavior. Good morning, Mr. Cotton. Good morning, Miss Brown. Uh, Pete, about what we were just saying, there's no time like the present. I will not believe that two good people cannot work out their problems. Folks, I have to run along. Have a good day. Okay. I have it coming. Yell back at me. I don't intend to yell. I do want to tell you something. I have a feeling that some doctor told you that by going back to work, it would be good therapy for you. It might be good for you, but it is a disaster for everyone else you come in contact with. I was prepared for yelling. I didn't know we were getting into karate. You are destroying the morale of my boys. And in the case of Arnie Rothman, you might be doing some very serious damage. Now, maybe you got so burned by one man that you decided to take revenge on the rest. Okay, that's your problem. Except now the targets aren't men, they're boys. And they shouldn't have to deal with your hang-up. Knock it off, Miss Brown. Okay, but you're going to buy what you want to anyway. Well. Oh, Mr. Dixon, uh, could I talk to you for just a minute? Sure. I'll wait for you outside. I was up half the night thinking about what you said. You were right. You know, you really blew my mind yesterday. It's been a long time since anyone has cared about what I was doing or had the courage to take a position. You know, we're raised on Snow White and Prince Charming, but no one ever tells you how much a man and a woman can hurt each other. Sometimes reality can be a shock. I didn't realize I was dumping my feelings on the boys. Maybe you didn't. But I had to tell you about it before I went too far. Thanks for yelling at me. That's all I really wanted to say. See you tomorrow? You bet. Good morning. Oh, hi. Hey, did you get a notice about the rise in the group insurance rates? I hope not, but I didn't look yet. I think they're trying to tell us something. Oh, Pete, I got hold of a book last night with the most incredible political concepts. I got so excited about it, I tried to call you, but... Well, I have a class on Wednesdays. Well, I'd like to talk to you about it. I mean, I want to use it right away. I'll walk you to your class. Uh. Arnie, my boy, I begin to see a glimmer of hope. This paper was done by a student that cares. 
Well, who'd he get to do it for him? <laughs> we'll get to your problem in a minute, Bernie. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I called you last night. You did. Liz. What's wrong? Nothing. I mean, uh, I don't care if half the school thinks there's something going on between you and Diana Brown. I know better. Well, if you know better, then why the freeze? And if I'm uncomfortable, because of the way it looks to other people. I guess that's just my problem, huh? Well, it's your problem, it's mine too. Hi. Plus, one of these days you're gonna qualify for the magician's logo. I don't know what you said to Diana Brown, but whatever it was, it was perfect. Jason's walking around the hall smiling from wrist to wrist, and that boy, um, what's his name, uh, Arnie Rothman, He's hardly scratching at all anymore. It's fantastic. I told you, it'd just be a matter of time before you two were good friends. Diana was always one of the most loving people you ever want to meet. Does anybody hear a very large silence? Pass the pepper, please. Hi. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, has anyone seen Miss Brown today? She's absolutely radiant, all lit up from inside. You know what I think? I think Miss Brown's in love. She has all the signs. She's blooming. Excuse me. What's going on? What? This is ridiculous. Yeah, well, if it's so ridiculous, why don't you clear it up? Because there's nothing to clear up. Well, yes, there is, Pete. But can't you see it? Or maybe you're so flattered by the whole thing, you just don't want to see it. Oh, B, listen, friend, you're pretty good in the truth department. Would you shine a little light on me? If I can. Do you think I'm in love with you? No. Why? Funny. I was beginning to think I was. But you've only known me five days. Yes, I know, but... Uh, I haven't exactly been operating out of logic, have I? And I don't think now is the time for me to be in teaching. Well, you may be right, but uh, have you given it a lot of thought? This is a test paper that uh, I can't return to the student because I was doodling over it all day in class, like a teenager. I think you should see it. I'm too good a teacher to be as bad as I've been this week. Diane, you're very sure about this. Very. But at the spot here next year, I'll come back if you want me. We want you. How about now? <laughs> no. Well, good luck. Is Brown. Thank you. So you're going to do it, huh? Mm-hmm. Come back. When I'm ready. You were right. About what? This is Pete Dixon. Diana Dixon? Mrs. Diana Brown Dixon? Boy, she was really getting carried away. Liz. I mean, of all the nerve, and in just one week. Liz. <gasps> oh, oops. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry for most of the things that have happened today. On the other hand, by the looks of you two, looks like everything's okay. So, I'll just get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.